Hi guys, welcome to today's video. It's gonna be like repot, root check type thing. I've got an orchid and what else have I got? I wanna chop and prop my avocado tree because it looks absolutely ridiculous. And I wanna check the roots on my philodendron golden dragon. But first I'm just gonna do a little update on my tie constellation because, so here he is leaning over. He's actually got, so he's in this little cup thing clipped onto the side of the aquarium. He's got a new aerial root somewhere. Just here. And he's also got, let's pick him up. Can't really see. Oh, you really just want to come out of that. See if I can just, right, yeah, here. He's got a new growth point here. And then, oh God, what is that? And then there's another new growth point on the other side. Like he looks like he's got little horns, which is extremely exciting. So he does like being in here. You can see these are new roots all growing. Hi guys. And there's some moss like growing in here. He has got a bit of algae on the roots, but there's snails in there. They will eat that off. So I'm not that fussed about the algae on the roots, to be perfectly honest. Right, so this wet stick is a philodendron tauten. The ones with the, oh, I'll show you, I've got one over here. It's not in great shape, but this one with the weird leaves. Yeah, so I chopped and propped this bit just because he got, re he got really bad aphids. So he came with aphids and I was like, and naively, well, I'd get rid of those and he didn't. And so I put this in the fish tank. Is it gonna focus? No. That's a root, that bit there. This is a problem with growing stuff in the fi in the fish tank. They never grow. I want roots at this end. Is that snail in there? No. I want roots at this end and then leaves at the other, but they just do whatever, wherever. So yeah, he can just go in there. But yeah, he's when he's regrown, he's still got aphids. So I really don't know what I'm going to do about that. But yeah, that's the update on that. It's It seems to be growing okay. So this tree I grew from, what's it called? The stone. And I went through this phase of collecting all my avocado stones and trying to grow them all without thinking like, what the hell am I gonna do with a load of avocado plants? Because avocados are trees, they grow really big and don't make the mistake I did, which was letting the roots grow really, really long because this part is huge. Like really it's too big for the plant, but the root, goes it's got like a tap root so it goes straight down and it's really strong there's nothing you can do about it so yeah get it in soil as quickly as possible if you're planning on putting it in soil so this goes outside in summer like here you can't give them enough light inside and it's also massive and it's a pain to find somewhere to put it so this goes outside all summer where it gets chomped on by all kinds of bugs and stuff and it Basically, it has a really terrible life and all its leaves fell off. And then, no, they didn't fall off. They looked really like manky. And then I had to bring it in for winter because otherwise it would have died. And it didn't like being inside. It didn't like winter. It's an avocado tree. Like it wants to be living in Mexico, but it, it, it's not. It's here in North Yorkshire. And yeah, but every summer, so this thing is massive. This is the bottom. <laughs> there's, there's two in there. There's like a little one and then there's this big one which is this big like this so yeah um so what i'm gonna do is so there's loads of new growth you can see all this new growth at the bottom um this one not so much but we'll see you know if we can force that so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually just gonna chop it off here um and then Right now, I was just gonna chop it. So this is where the sort of new growth is. I'm just gonna sterilize these scissors. Obviously I haven't, like I would never do anything like that, but it's best to. So now we've just got a little avocado tree and he's growing really well and like he'll have loads of energy. He's got massive roots. So he's got loads of energy and then he can make, you know, a new tree. But now I've got like, I'm left with this and there's new growth like all the way along it. 
So all the way, there's like little bits of um, like little shoots coming out. And if I left it long enough, they would probably all grow, but they're not gonna grow that well because there's a lot of nodes on it. And I'd rather have a few nodes grow well than all the nodes grow badly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, again, just chop it and then stick it back in the soil. I'm also gonna take off these new le these leaves because I mean, like they're ready to go. Um, I'm not gonna chop it again, but I am gonna bury it quite deep just so it's not ridiculous. It's still ridiculous, isn't it? And then if these two take, I don't know if they will. I hope they will. Uh, and then we'll have a really bushy avocado tree and I'll probably just keep doing this. Like pruning it back so it's a, it's a bush rather than a tree. And then hopefully it'll be a bit healthier and it will survive the winter better, but we'll just have to see. But if these two take, then I'll chop this one down because like this bit of stem, I'm not like particularly happy about it. So anyway, there's that done. If you want to try and grow an avocado pit, it is fun, but as I say, like just do a couple. The best method I've found is if you get a piece of damp kitchen towel, wrap your avocado stone in it, stick it in a freezer bag and then put it somewhere like a windowsill um, and then in a few weeks it will sprout. I used to check mine maybe weekly, just redampen the kitchen towel, try not to let it dry out too much. And yeah, it's fairly easy to do, but as I say, don't let the roots get that long because it's a really thick, rigid root more like a branch than a root and you, like, you'll like you need to find a really deep pot for it if you let it grow too big. Right, so next up today, I need to do something with this orchid. Now, this orchid came to me actually looking worse than this, but that was two years ago. I'm not like a massive fan of orchids. I'm very much a foliage over flowers girl, but that is, since my Hoya Bella bloomed, that is kind of changing a bit. So I'm gonna try and revive this. All I've been doing, so my friend gave it to me and it was in like, basically 100% compost, really, really dense, thick, and it was overwatered in a pot like this with no like drainage hole on the bottom. So it was in a really sorry state. And I've, so I've kept it alive, it's not dead, but it looks like crap and I don't even know if it's put out any new leaves, never mind like new growth. So the, these leaves are dying, not because, like I think they're just old, but my boyfriend just texted me to <laughs> check Messenger. It will probably be a bird video because that is a thing that we, like we spend a lot of time watching like bird videos. I'm terrified of birds. They're really scary, but God, they're so cute. But anyway, I can't check Messenger, messenger where I'm filming this. I'll check it later. Right, so I really need to go and check messenger, don't I? Ah! It was bird content, but they found a nest of baby birds at my boyfriend's work that has had to be re relocated because it's in a very dangerous position. So they are trying to find someone to take them. I don't know how good I'd be at raising baby robins. They'll wait for their mother to come. Why do birds always put nests in places where they really shouldn't? Like. You can't, we can't put it back because it was a dangerous place that it was in. Because my boyfriend works on an industrial estate, which is not a great place to raise baby birds. So we shall have to see. Like they can come and stay in our garden and we'll do our best to keep them safe, but they need their mother to feed them really. Uh, so they'll, you know, we obviously need a wildlife rescue person who can help us. Okay, back to the orchid after a bit of a bird interval. This is, ah, oh my God. <laughs> like the roots are small but they are there and they are like uh, reasonably healthy and there's new growth here I don't know anything about orchids like I don't think this is great <laughs> but it's it's on there so can't see any bugs or anything not too keen on this one. Oh. I think this is like a soil root versus water root type thing. Oh well, I just broke that, didn't I? Anyway, so this is like, oh, there's a lot of roots left in there. I'm really sorry. I feel like I won't rest until you're actually dead. This is just 
like weird grey lacquer. Now someone's ringing me. What's happening? Go away. Um, please stop ringing me. <laughs> there they go again. Stop it, I'm busy. <sighs> no one ever calls me unless I'm busy. And I'm never, like I'm never busy. I work from home writing on a website. I never do anything. And the one time I'm trying to film, they want me. It's just cold callers, but it's annoying. Right, so this is an old plastic recycled cup that I poked ho holes in the bottom, which I'm not going to use. Instead, well, let me tip you forward. I'm gonna use this. So we have a net pot and this cute little vase. Fits perfectly. And, Lekker wasn't working brilliantly for me, so what I'm going to do is... The reason I've put it in a like much smaller pot is that like <laughs> there's no roots, but I do want it in a clear pot. So I'm going to change up the substrate a bit. So I've got some orchid bark here that I just got from eBay. I'm going to put a layer of that on the bottom. And then I've got this, which we use in our terrarium, called Forest. I don't know what's in it. It's got orchid bark in it and stuff. But I was like, I've got it, I may as well use it. So yeah, I'm gonna put some of that in. It's just like, what's it like? It's just like, soil <laughs> is what it's like right why did you do that you, i've just washed that bar oh. it amazes me i got this far in life now the problem with using a small vase is this orchid doesn't want to stay upright that's all right Well, leave him like you can't see. So here he is in his new little vase, and I am going to try and take better care of him. Because he was like given to me on the, like she trusted my, my plant care skills. And I don't have like great skills in getting plants to do really well, but I'm really good at not letting them die. She's in there. And I'm hoping she'll fill those roots out. Now I'm just gonna get my teapot and give her a bit of a soak. And scrape the bits off the side and put them in. Done it again. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I need to do more research on orchids. Like I know the basics, but like finding the right light for them is not the easiest. I'm gonna put it in the bathroom because my maidenhair fern loves it in there. Like I'm gonna show you actually. I vacuumed in this room this morning and it already looks like I've tipped soil everywhere because I have. This made in heaven was down to she had one frond because she got aphids and was dying. But I uh, increased the light, like made in ferns like light, they burn quite easily, which is just really frustrating. But in the forest, they get like dappled light from like the other trees would block the harsh rays. Uh, and some would burn, but plants in the wild, if you know, the, if they look like crap, they don't care. So I've got this in my bathroom window and it's south facing, but there is a house next door that blocks it. And the glass is like textured glass. So it's not, it's like perfect, bright and direct. I think I'm going to keep it there year round because, so the thing about maidenhair ferns is they're not actually that 
picky if you have them in the right place and you don't let them dry out. Like I water mine with tap water and she really doesn't mind. The issue is not giving them enough light and letting them dry out. Like those are the things they just won't tolerate. So, but once you've got that bit down, they're fine. And like, she's growing, this here is a new frond. And then she's growing them all the time. So they are okay. Like they have this reputation for being divas, but they're not really once you've got like the basics covered. And they have the bonus, like the problem with bathrooms, especially like, not especially, if you live in a country with a significant winter, they're really cold. But maidenhair ferns, a lot of the species, I mean, there's tons of species, but a lot of them are fairly tolerant of cold temperatures. So I couldn't keep a lot of plants in my bathroom over winter because, well, for a start, I just not have the window open to let the moisture out. So it does get quite cold in there, but she will tolerate that okay. That is my story about maidenhair ferns. They're not as bad as we kind of are conditioned to believe they are. If they have the humidity and the light that they want, they, they do want to grow. And they are another one, like, if all the fronds die off, if you continue to look after them, they will regrow. And I know, because mine did, from, like, nothing. She literally had one dying frond. Right. So my last task of today is sorting out... Oh, that's wonky. Okay, it's not my phone that's wonky, it's my tripod. Oh my god. I don't like that shelf being in the frame. It's my shelf of crap. Doors open. <sighs> the baby robins is like throwing me a bit. Am I gonna have baby robins in my house? There's not that many wildlife places around here. The nearest one's like an hour away. Right, so this is my philodendron golden dragon cutting. And this is the new leaf. <laughs> Looking like crap. I don't really know what happened here. It's not it's not my place to judge. Clearly something was incorrect. So um what we're gonna do is tip out the letter and just have a little look at what's going on. didn't like that. The roots are looking absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that. And it does just seem like the leaves die. So often, right, never, I say never, like I do this literally every time. When the leaves die like this, often there is new growth inside. So don't rip it off. Be gentle. Now I'm not a gentle person, so... Let me just grab the pot. Let me just balance in there. So we very gently, or we try to very gently just sort of unfurl it. Then often, hey, there's a new leaf all ready to go. So don't just like blindly rip it off. I actually think that's a petiole. I think that's like the the leaf casing. So, um, mm. but I thought there'd be rot, but there's not. That rhymed. Uh, so yeah, I think she'll be okay. Let's see if there's any more growth points. Can't see any. But like I'm quite happy like she's got a strong like this is a strong growth point you can't really see it because it's covered in lacquer but this here where the new leaf came from like I'm confident that is a decent growth point so yeah she's yeah a bit of a mystery there as to why you decided that seriously why is everything so wonky today that's not better that's worse so I'm just gonna pop a it wouldn't surprise me. Now I'm just speculating here. This is a problem with plants. Somebody commented on my um, 
why has my mom Sarah got brown spots video saying so you don't know why it's got brown spots no like I don't know I can just give you some possible reasons why it could be doing it but this is likely to be so here in the UK this year we had like often in March there's like a little glimmer of you'll get like a, a week of really nice weather and we had that in like February it was like night like nice and then March hit and March is often like a crap month but like March April we had like snow and hail and it was just like awful cold weather like more than normal so I think that I, feel, I think like she was like oh, I'm gonna grow and then decided that in fact what a waste of energy so that's going back in there this leaf by the way I mean it looks like crap but it's been hanging on for a really long time I mean would it really be one of my videos if I didn't show you throwing letter everywhere So I've left it, I've sort of tilted it a bit. So this one's leaning over, but like this, <laughs> like she's very much done on the last legs. So um, I'm, I've just left this little new leaf like that. Uh, people ask me about the shower method versus the, uh, <laughs> what the hell? Versus the reservoir method with lacquer. I always use the reservoir method if, it's a plant that I don't think will do well in the lecker. I would like like Hoya and stuff, people are like they get root rot so quickly, put them in dry lecker, make sure they're dried out. I I'm not patient enough. Like I wish I was, but I just don't have the time and then I'll end up forgetting to flush it. Basically the shower method, you don't put a reservoir in the bottom, you just water it normally. Wait for the lecker to dry out and then water it again. But I like the reason that I go with lecker is convenience. It's more work at once, but I can sh put in my calendar like once a month, make up nutrients, go around, flush everybody, that kind of thing. Um, and the rest of the time you can just top up the, my belly's going. So yeah, for me, the if I was gonna do the shower method, I just wouldn't bother. I'd just keep it in soil and water it normally. They all have a reservoir and the ones that I don't think will do well, I prop in water first. I've actually found if you've watched me for a while, you realize you'll know that uh, if you pr if you have an air regard, I know not everyone has an air regard, and I'm not saying go out and get one, but if you are really into Hoya and you like propagating them, they do really really well propagated in an air garden. If you've got one lying around, uh, if you don't, then I'm assuming the conditions for propping Hoya in water is a lot of airflow and good light, because I'm that's like what the air garden provides. So yeah. Airstone windowsill be going. Um, I have propped my Hoya crinkle is just there in just in water and it does work but god it takes a long long time. They don't do anything for like months and months and months and months and months and then you'll get roots and leaves and stuff all in one go so it really depends on how patient you are. But yeah that's why I don't use the shower method it's just I don't it depends on why you have them in Lekka. I have them in for convenience and the shower method isn't convenient so everybody has a reservoir. Seriously, I have to, have to go and have my lunch. I'm starving. Right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I will see you next week. Uh, if there's anything you want, like, you can see the plants I've got behind. <laughs> if there's anything you want me to like talk about or repot or anything, just leave me a comment. If there's anything specific that you want me to like demonstrate or show or talk about, just let me know. If you think I might have the plant, or if you think I can get the plant, I'll go and buy plants, that's fine. Uh, yeah. I've got nothing else to say. Bye.